Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We start off with a look at the past weekend here, last 72 hours of total accumulated precipitation here, estimated by satellite. And this was going to be the tail end of the wetter time period we were going to see, especially for parts of Argentina. Some of the locations in here having some pretty sizable thunderstorm clusters that rolled through there, bringing in plenty of precipitation. A bit more scattered, but more normal monsoonal precipitation across parts of Brazil's central and northern areas, with the eastern regions being the driest over the last weekend. And we start off there because we know we're going over toward a week where much of Argentina is going to be quite dry, as you can see here. This is total accumulated precipitation through the next five days, and we're going to have a lot of higher atmospheric pressure in this area. And it will likely not be until the weekend before we start to see normal convective activity, in other words, normal thunderstorm activity coming back into parts of Argentina. Throughout this week, very heavy rainfall through parts of Mato Grosso, Parana, and northern parts of Rio Grande do Sul but very dry once again over here in this section of eastern Brazil. Thinking about the precipitation in Mato Grosso, we do see widespread 30 millimeter to 100 millimeter rainfall amounts here indicating, you know, that'd be an inch to upwards of three inches of rainfall throughout this week, but it's going to be scattered in nature, which is typical of the monsoon. Now, as I stretch this out over a 10-day time period, we will continue to see the heaviest precip focus right in through this area with the drier in Brazil's eastern growing areas, as you can see here. We are still drier than normal in parts of Mato Grosso with some places that are missing out on the scattered convection here, uh, continuing to, to, to deal with their drought conditions. But the question will be, what do we end up getting in through parts of Argentina? Because it does get dry, very dry, as you get up here toward the Andes Mountains. But how much convection will we see toward the end of this week is going to be the big question to answer. So let's take a look here at the high-resolution European model, and let's start this forward. You're going to see here throughout the beginning of this week, high pressure dominating Argentina. See it? And the stalled-out frontal boundary is right here through southern Brazil over toward Paraguay. And as I just play forward, that's the way things are until we get to Friday. Now what you're going to notice is, at this point moving forward, uh, flashes of green start to show up here in parts of Argentina. That's the European model initiating convection in that area. And you're going to see continued what looks to be normal monsoonal rainfall through parts of Brazil. So you see here's the afternoon flashes of green. See that can kind of rock back and forth and here it is the next day. And so we're going to watch on satellite and on radar to see later on this week how much precipitation does come in through the weekend after a very dry week coming up this week for parts of Argentina. Now, putting that all together, I, I got to confess something here. I cannot really define what has been controlling the pattern in South America. I, I thought I've had a handle on this, but it has exposed to me that I have a lot left to learn about this monsoon. You know, I made a case back in December and January. Well, we saw the Antarctic Oscillation really increasing in its values. And I said, well, that would normally give us uh, you know, positive correlation with precipitation rate over Brazil's central and northern area, that would have been wet. And it would have been drier down in Argentina. That's at least what that would have showed. And then as we've got into January, it's collapsed back down here. And as expected, as you see in the forecast, to stay closer to average. But this is the pattern we got when we look back over the last month. We've actually had quite a bit more thunderstorm activity through parts of Argentina. And we've been very dry. The monsoon's been weaker uh, across Brazil. That would be the opposite of what I would have thought. So then I start saying, well, was it was La Nina out doing this? So we go look at the Southern Oscillation Index. Now remember, you got to be above about seven, which is off the chart, to be in La Nina territory. And we've been way up here, going up at times approaching a value of 20, telling us what these pressure patterns are going to do. But you see, if we look at what the correlation is, especially in January with the Southern Oscillation Index, if it's positive, we tend to be wet in through here, drier south and drier over the southeast. You're going, no, wait a minute, doesn't that look better? And I have to tell you, no, it didn't match up well with Argentina. And while it may have gotten this right, I'll put a, another circle over here, it certainly didn't tell us much because the correlations are so weak about Brazil. I then looked at the tropical North Atlantic Oscillation, the, the tropical South Atlantic Oscillation, the total Nino, and I looked at a bunch of these. And nothing is correlating strongly with this pattern, except for this. I went back over the month of January so far and back over into December. And what we've just noticed is the best rising motion in the atmosphere has been here, north of Australia to China, covering Indonesia, that part of the Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean. We've seen better suppression of vertical motion over here. Now you'd say, well, shouldn't that be correlated with 
the MJO? And the answer is yes, it should be. But this is basically just looking at how the atmosphere is breathing. We have rising motion between 180 east to about 100, well, about 80 east, and sinking motion over here in South America. And so what's the MJO going to do? Well, let me just tell you what that all means, by the way. It means the MJO has been wanting to stay over in this side, which we would expect if there's a La Nina. But where's it going in the near term? Well, it's going to jump out here into phase seven, possibly moving back over to phase six. Now, phase seven here historically correlates with wet over the Amazon, and there's weaker correlations across much of the rest of Brazil. All right, so this isn't even right now a strongly correlated teleconnection in the atmosphere. And if it does go to phase six, well, that would be drier. And we see that as we look out into week two, wetter conditions down here in parts of southern Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Argentina, where we saw the convection coming in, but there's still a drier bias in through Mato Grosso, Brazil's central and northern growing areas. But we got to watch this carefully as we finish the month of January going to February. And one of the big reasons why, this was the, uh, excuse me, I circled the wrong one. This was the old forecast from uh, issued uh, back on the uh, 11th of January, forecasting the time period of January 21 through February 21. And it just picked out this dry corridor here. Well, here's the same time period, but from the ECMWF initialized on the 14th. And you now know, you don't see the same pattern. And I just look at this and I start to scratch my head and wonder what is really controlling the monsoon. While it seems as though out to about 10 days, the models have been doing very well with this. I think there's too many moving pieces to single out one to tell you what's going on. So I'm going to watch the models carefully and try to learn along with you. But I'll keep you posted on what these models are suggesting the pattern's going to look like, all right? So that's it. We'll wrap it up there. Thanks for your attention today. Talk to you again soon.